Today we're going to take the name of a metal and nonmetal compound and turn it into its equation. So the trick here is to look at the charge on each of them and see how they would balance each other. However, I got a little confused when I was first told to do this because it doesn't quite reflect what's happening. So the two elements don't have charges when they're bonding. They get the charges from bonding. So they're neutral technically. And so we'll take this example here, sodium sulfide. We look at our periodic table and sodium has a charge of plus one. So we're gonna write plus one. We look at sulfide. See if I can find my sulfide here. Here we go. And remember that sulfide is just sulfur, but the since it's a metal and non-metal compound, the ending, the suffix, has been changed to ide. So we look here and we see that it has a charge, is going to be negative two. And that's because it's a non-metal, and non-metals tend to gain electrons. And so by gaining electrons, it's going to become more negative. So it's going to be a negative 2. So here we have plus 1, negative 2. So the easy way to do it is think, how would we balance these? So if we have negative 2 and plus 1, what can we do to balance them? Well, you could have two plus ones and one negative two, and that would end up equaling zero, and that would balance them. However, another way to think of it, and which reflects more of what's actually happening, is to think, which is basically the same thing as we're doing, but is to think, okay, uh, this sodium here wants to achieve a plus one, and this one wants to achieve a negative two. So how can we combine them to get that? Well we can give away one electron per sodium because each sodium wants to have a plus one charge. So sodium here wants to have a plus one charge. So that can give away one electron. However, we need to give away two electrons, which means we're going to need another sodium. And that means that sulfide will get those two electrons. And it's going to have a charge of negative 2, so it makes that happy. So that's what's really happening. So we're going to have Na2 and S is just 1. So then we have calcium oxide. And we'll look at our periodic table. Calcium has a charge of plus two. Plus two. And oxygen has a charge of negative two. Now we can see right away to balance these, all you'd have to do is have one of each. So that's just Ca. a messy A. All of this is very messy, but anyway. Um, and like I said, another way to think of this, this calcium wants to give away two, this one wants to gain two, perfect, just one and one. Then we have sodium bromide. We already know sodium is Na, and it has the charge of plus one from our first question. But bromide, we'll look here, right there, has a charge of negative one. So, they combine in a one-to-one -one ratio again. We have Na, B, R. And now for our last one, beryllium chloride. So, if we look at the periodic table, we will see 
that beryllium has a charge of plus two. I'm gonna write it down here. And chloride has a charge of minus one. And again, you're gonna see chlorine on the table because that ending has been changed to I because it's a metal and non-metal compound, which I mentioned in my last video. So beryllium, B, and chlorine Cl. So write B E. And let's see here. To balance this, you'd need two of the negative one to balance the plus two to equal zero. So Cl is gonna have to have two of them. And that's all you need to know. Thanks, see you next time.